Riders, welcome back to Sands Bikes, where you know we only talk e-bikes, and today we are looking at the six-day review of the Rocky Mountain Altitude. I've had a great time on this bike, and a massive shout out to Anthony, who has lent me his bike. It was brand new, and to say thanks, I'm giving a massive shout out to his brand, Gnarly. I've been rocking this top for the last, or his jerseys, for the last couple of weeks. I'm gonna put it out there and say these jerseys are as good as all the majors on the market. And you also get that warm, fuzzy feeling knowing you've supported a rider trying to do good things in the mountain bike industry. And a massive shout out to our long-term sponsors, Schwabi, and you will see a fresh pair of rubber on the Rocky Mountain to say thanks even more to Anthony. I've hooked him up some new Magic Marys front and back. And also riders, this is how I love to test all my long-term electric mountain bikes. Got to put the Schwabi tires on it. And my go-to setup is an ultra soft Magic Mary on the front in a super downhill casing. And on the back, again, a Magic Mary in the soft, in the super gravity casing. That is the best setup for me. And now on to my six day review of this bike. The Rocky Mountain Altitude is a 170, 160 super enduro electric mountain bike high pivot suspension, rolling on 29 wheels, but it's also mullet compatible. The Rocky Mountain has its own motor, the Dynam 4.0, with a whopping 108 Nm of power and a 720 watt hour removable battery. The Altitude is available in five models, and I'm riding the base model, the Alloy 30 Coil. And how does the Rocky Mountain Altitude look? Because we all need to ride a good looking electric mountain bike. I like the lines of this bike. I like the look of Rocky Mountains in general. I think the motor could be a little bit big, but I also like how they've mounted it vertically to give it a short chain stay. Overall, I think the appearance is good and also the remote is very minimalistic and I do love how they have dropped the display in the down tube. Very classy and very good integration for an electric mountain bike. The Rocky Mountain is no slouch when it comes to adjustable geometry. We have a four-way flip chip in the suspension linkage here, and also a 10 mil flip chip in the chainstay, making it from a 437 to a 447, which I absolutely love. I rode the altitude in position three, giving the bike a 64 degree head tube angle, seat tube angle 75.5, and a whopping 510 millimeter reach. My beggars can't be choosers. As I said, I borrowed this bike. But to give you an idea, this is a reasonably large electric mountain bike with a medium reach coming in at 455 and a large at 480. And right, as you would know, I'm a massive fan of 29er wheels paired with a short chainstay. And we've got a 437 millimeter chainstay here, which I'm gonna say was a little bit too short for the extra large with the 510 millimeter reach. But it does have that flip chip, so you can make it 447, which I really like because you can choose because the shorter riders or the shorter size bikes are gonna be better in the short chain stay, and the extra large is gonna be better, in my opinion, in the 447, so flipping the chip, making it longer. And riders, we all know that I can geek out over the numbers and specs of e-bikes for absolutely hours. But more importantly, how does this bike ride on the trails? So let's go find out. But I wanna tell you riders, I didn't get on that well with the Dynam 4.0. I did reach out to Rocky Mountain and they said possibly there was a problem with the torque sensor. Now I'm not so sure about that because I didn't get any error messages when riding it. And also it was a brand new bike. And also I wanna say I did go in and tweak the settings of the motor, which didn't seem to give me very many different results. Anyway, Rocky Mountain said they possibly are gonna send another bike out for me to do a deep dive on the motor and system. But this is what I found out so far. Okay, legend riders, we are at Hohalloran Hill. This is my sixth day on the Rocky Mountain altitude. And a massive shout out to Anthony for lending me the bike. And this is gonna be a little bit different, this review, because I've only been riding it six days. I've also, it's an extra large, so it's not exactly my size. And also it's my mate's bike, so I don't wanna give it back to him in two pieces. But what have I found on six days riding the Rocky Mountain? Well, I've had a great time. The attitude is a 170, 160, like super enduro, 
downhill slash enduro e-bike. Okay, so it downhill rides really well, as you would expect from a Rocky Mountain. Very planted, very stable, and it's more stable than I expected when I was looking at those geo numbers. 437, and I did ride it in the short chain stay the whole time. You do need to weight the back more, as you would expect, so you need to put your weight more over that back wheel, but it is pretty planted, and I would dare say, if you want it more stable, you go the 447 flip chip at the back, and there you go. And also, very versatile bike with that four-way headset change at the front. So the steepest is 64 and a half, I believe, or 64, and the slackest is 63 and a half. So you don't have a lot of movement there with those, with those four changes, but it will definitely change the feeling out in the bike. And with enduro riding, with that short change day, I found it a very fun bike to ride. Um, sometimes a little nervous. I mean, if it's steep and switchbacks, that back end definitely gets around, but it can get quite expressive. But again, you have all those geometry changes, so you can tweak it to what you like and where you ride. And trail riding, what I'm doing today at O'Halloran Hill in South Australia, is for a 170, 160 super enduro bike that's very confident at plowing, it's not a bad trail bike. Again, down to that short chain stay, it's quite playful and it's quite a fun bike to ride out on just normal trails. And when it comes to jumping, it gets off the ground pretty easy. As I said, I haven't been doing big hucks on this bike because it's not my bike and it is brand new and I don't want to give it back in two pieces. Uh, but yeah, fine jumper, suspension kinematics. Again, haven't pushed it to the absolute limit, but it all feels very good. And definitely Rocky Mountain know how to make a mountain bike. So we've gone through how it downhills, how it enduro, how it trails, how it jumps, how it's suspension. Now the most important part, and probably the biggest question mark most riders would have when looking at this bike, is how is the Dyname 4.0 motor and system? Well, there is definitely a lot to unpack here. First of all, massive props to Rocky Mountain for designing their own system. Their remote is very minimalistic, really nice feel, maybe a little bit plasticky feeling, but works very well, very discreet. The display as well, I love how it's integrated into the frame, and yeah, it just works very well. I would say the software is a little bit basic. Um, I kind of pride myself on not reading any manuals and just see how easy it is to use. And I had a look at it for about half an hour and it took me quite a long time to work out how to tune the motor. Uh, but you do hold down the enter button for four seconds and it gets you into another screen. And the motor size, well the motor size is quite a large motor. I do like how it's kind of vertically mounted. So it does allow Rocky Mountain to get that really short chain stay. And the motor does not have a clunk in it, which is a big bonus. And it is a silent motor. What you are hearing is actually the chain noise from the high pivot. And I have ridden a few high pivot normal bikes and they do sound like this. So there's that. And also I went out and did an extreme range test where I put it in the highest assistant mode in the ludicrous mode and looped Kangarilla in South Australia 14 times. And let me tell you riders, the 720 watt hour battery has massive range. It actually wins the range test out of the Shimano, Bosch, Bros, Yamaha, Sync Drive Pro, all of them. It actually blows them out of the water, but it is a motor that needs more input from a rider. So at the end, we got, I think, 1,700 meters of vertical climbing. You'll see it in the graph here. And, but I actually worked a lot more. So now I've given all the praises to what I like about the motor. Now what I don't like about the motor, and there's a bit here. I'm sorry, Rocky Mountain. Uh, it's got 108 newton meters of power on paper. Now, I've had the pleasure of riding the TQ motor 
which has 120 newton meters of power. Also, the new Bafang, which got 95 newton meters of power. And also all the other motors, the Bosch, the Bros, the Shimano, the Yamaha, the Synchro. And I'm gonna say, if I didn't know this had 108 newton meters of power, I would say this had the least amount of power out of all of them by feeling. And let me unpack that even more. So basically, you need to access that 108 newton meters of power. You need to be in a ridiculous high cadence. I'm finding it to really access that, you need to be over 100 RPM. Now, if you're a you know, seasoned mountain bike rider, you know that's really not that comfortable to do for a long period of time and you are forever changing gears. And I, and I kind of think of it like this. I used to have a Mazda RX-7, a rotary, years and years and years ago. And you know, when I got it, I was a bit disappointed because everyone said it was so powerful. And it took me a couple of weeks to realize, or a couple of hours to realize that, you know, the rotary really liked to be in really high RPM. It didn't even show its performance until you were there. So even though this motor does have really high torque, it's quite hard to access and a little bit annoying for a long ride. And I feel it drains your energy more than let's say the Bosch, the Bros, the Shimano, the Yam, like the, all the, the top motors at the moment. So I would say, yeah, it's a, little, it's a little frustrating. I wasn't expecting that. I mean, it's not bad. It's just something that I wasn't expecting. And also with that pedal stroke, when you get to that high RPM, and this is even harder to explain, it's, it's like when your pedal stroke, when you're going down and you're going quite fast, your pedal stroke is not actually even. So it's kind of like an oval shape. And obviously you have power and then you have a little bit of drop off on power. And I'm kind of feeling when I am putting down that power to, to get the full 108 newton meters, there's kind of like a dead spot in the pedal stroke right at the bottom. So it kind of feels empty, like you get a lot of torque and then it's in a way, if you slowed it down and, and amplified what the sensation was, it was kind of like a jerking feeling. Uh, you don't feel that jerking feeling, but it's kind of like, it's like you get the power and like you go into power band and you can feel power band and then all of a sudden it, it, it goes down a bit. So to stay in power band, I think you probably benefit from having clip pedals. I've done this whole test on flat pedals. You also need to have a lot of fitness to be able to hold that high cadence and you need to have a very round pedal stroke. So yeah, I could be wrong riders. As I said, I've only done six days on it, but I was blown away by the range. Um, it definitely has a very natural feeling pedal stroke. Um, but saying that also, like, you know, when you come out of a corner and you, you might have wrong gear selection, uh, you know, the cadence, if the cadence is wrong, you're just not gonna get the power from that motor straight away. You kinda, it kinda needs time for it to warm up. And it kinda threw me out. Like this morning, I tried to jump something that I always jump, and I took two pedal strokes, and I was in ludicrous, and it should have just boosted me up over that jump. But I actually paused, and like I, I cased the jump, and yeah, I mean, if you are watching steel riders, you're gonna say, I'm probably a little bit underwhelmed with this motor so far. And riders, we are back in Ordinga Beach. Put in the comments what you thought of that different style, me explaining the whole bike in POV. It is a bit more loose. That wasn't scripted. That was just me out riding for a few hours. And now let's look at the models. So the Rocky Mountain Altitude is available in five models, starting from 5,500 euros all the way up to 11,000 euros. I'm gonna say Rocky Mountain for value and spec is about a mid-tier brand. I don't think it's amazing value, but I don't think it's bad value either. But if it was me, I reckon I'd be going for the Carbon 70 at about 9,000 euros, but also that new limited edition looks really cool at 11,000 euros. And the Rocky Mountain Altitude is available in four sizes, 
I'm 183 centimeters and I was riding the extra large with a 510 millimeter reach. Now, if I was riding flat out enduro trails, you know, really trying to hit PBs and comms, I would go large with a 480 millimeter reach. But also, I found this bike quite playful with that short chainstay. And to keep that all balanced, I might go the medium, I might size down in with the 455 millimeter reach and that short chainstay of 437, very reminiscent of the Specialized Levo SL, very similar geometry, and I absolutely loved that bike. And it's not all gravy, no electric mountain bike is perfect. The Rocky Mountain, on the whole, was really good. I think Rocky Mountain have done a fantastic job with the infrastructure of their own electric mountain bike motor. They've made their own motor, they've got their own remote, own display, own software. It is very impressive. But on the whole, if you compare it to all the other electric mountain bike motors on the market, it's a little bit of a letdown. And also, with the advertisement of 108 Nm of power, I personally felt this probably one of the slowest motors in the full power category I've tested. The fact that you need to be in really high cadence to access that power, for me, is not really realistic on a two or three hour ride. And like a lot of the electric mountain bike companies, they're stocking their bikes with thin casing tires to bring them in at a lighter weight. That's a mistake. I put on some Shoreby straight away and it was much better. But overall, value for money, I think the Rocky Mountain at five and a half thousand euros or 8,000 Australian dollars what Anthony paid is good value. I think the spec's really good. I mean, Anthony's changed a few bits and pieces, but value for money, it's there. It is a good bike. I just have the benefit of comparing against the whole lineup of electric motors. And it is an electric mountain bike, so we are testing that motor and system. So who is the Rocky Mountain Altitude for? Well, I think it's for someone that is a fitter rider. You definitely can keep up with full powered electric mountain bikes with this bike, but you are gonna have to earn your turns. You will work harder, but also it's for someone that wants to do a lot of range. This bike is an absolute range monster. And down to the million dollar question, would I buy with my hard earned cash, the Rocky Mountain Altitude today? Anthony, mate, I'm sorry. I'm gonna say it is a no from Sam's Bikes. I think, you know, ignorance is bliss. If I'd only ever ridden this bike, it's really good. It's a really good electric mountain bike. But when comparing it against to all the other motors on the market, I think this is lacking. But I'm also gonna put it out there and say that Rocky Mountain have done a fantastic job at bringing this motor display remote to market. Rocky Mountain is not a big company, so it is really impressive what they've done, but I think there is still work to be done to improve it. Anyway, riders, I hope you enjoyed this six day look on the Rocky Mountain Altitude. If you have any questions on this bike or any other bike, please put it down in the comments, love to help. And you know it right, stay safe out there this weekend and I'm gonna see you next week.